All right, the iPhone 15 Pro Max has been here for a couple of weeks and you might have seen a lot of camera comparison tests between the 14 Pro Max and the 15 Pro Max. Although they both share the same camera hardware for the main sensor, there are indeed some noticeable software improvements on the 15 Pro Max. One might imagine these improvements are due to the powerful A17 Pro chipset on the 15 Pro Max, but wait, what about the regular 15 and the 15 Plus devices? They share the exact same A16 Bionic chipset from the 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max and in fact they do have a far less capable camera sensor compared to the 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max. How do these devices support these features? I don't get it. In this video, I will dissect the four exclusive new features introduced on the 15 series devices that are missing on the 14 Pro series which to me absolutely makes no sense. I'm Amutan from Consumer Tech Insights. Let's dive in. So Apple introduced the new default 24 megapixel super high resolution images on the 15 series devices. I imagine this was some sort of software upscaling done on the 12 megapixel images. But what really happens is that the device captures 12 high exposure images and 12 low exposure images and combines the details from the 48 megapixel sensor via Apple's Deep Fusion engine to finally produce the 24 megapixel high resolution images. This results in better dynamic range and excellent details which is quite evident when you zoom in on the images. Now let's take a look at some samples. So when you take a look at these pictures, both images look quite similar but the 15 Pro Max is slightly better exposed and when you zoom in, you can see the level of details that the 24 megapixels retains. And all these extra details without compromising on the file size and processing time. This is absolutely disappointing considering the fact that the 14 Pro and Pro Max devices are very much capable of handling this but for some reason Apple decided to make this exclusive to the 15 series devices. Okay moving on to the next feature 7 lens camera system. So Apple introduced the new 7 lens camera system with two new additional software lenses with 28mm focal length and 35mm focal length. That's right Apple, I would rather call them as software lenses because these are nothing but just digital crop from the main 48 megapixel sensor. But if you think about it, you already kind of have this feature in the 14 Pro devices. As you can see, you can indeed select the 28mm and 35mm focal length using the zoom wheel on the 14 Pro devices. However, I must admit that this isn't fully user friendly and setting the focal length to exact 28mm or 35mm is kind of tricky. When you select the 1.2x option, it could be anywhere between 1.1x and 1.3x. So you might end up taking a 29mm photo or a 31mm photo and if you're lucky, you might get the 28mm image as well. Now let me show you some samples taken on both devices. As you can see, the 14 Pro Max's image is quite identical to the 15 Pro Max's 28mm image but the 24 megapixel super high resolution on the 15 Pro Max has a lot more details and slightly better exposure if you zoom in. The result is quite similar with the 35mm photo as well. The 15 Pro Max images are slightly better exposed and has more details compared to the 12 megapixel image on the 14 Pro Max. If you think about it, this really isn't a new feature. It's just a photographer friendly shortcut to select the 28mm and 35mm focal lens. Or else both devices have exactly the same option. But this would have been a really nice addition to the 14 Pro devices considering the fact that this is just a simple software feature. Ok, moving on to the next feature, the Smart HDR5. So Apple introduced the new Smart HDR5 with the 15 series devices. Yes, it is supported by both the base model and the pro model of the 15 series and Apple claimed that the new Smart HDR5 handles dynamic range better than the Smart HDR4 on the 14 Pro devices. Well, I did put these claims to the test and I can confirm that Smart HDR5 does have noticeable improvements over Smart HDR4. Alright, let's take a look at samples. So in this sample, you can see that overall the 15 Pro Max is better exposed compared to the 14 Pro Max and it also has a better dynamic range compared to the 14 Pro Max. This is quite evident when you zoom in and see on the grass. Now let's take a look at a sample from the front facing camera. Here I can definitely see better exposure on the 15 Pro Max and overall selfie quality is superior on the 15 Pro Max. 
So there you go. This is yet again another disappointment for 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max users. This is clearly a software improvement and if the regular 15 can handle it, so can the 14 Pro devices as well. So moving on to the next feature, automatic depth detection in regular camera mode. So with this feature, iPhone now automatically detects subjects including pet animals and when it detects these subjects, it also captures rich depth information. What this means is that you no longer have to switch to portrait mode to take some really nice portrait shots. Also, you can now change the depth of field and also the subject of focus after taking the shot. This is pretty cool as you really don't have to spend time on the composition as you can always adjust it later. But wait, doesn't the 14 Pro and Pro Max device have this feature? Yes, they do, but only limited to the portrait and cinematic video mode. But this already proves that the 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max is very much capable of handling rich depth information in real time or in post production. What is really missing is the automatic detection in the regular photo mode. But again, the base 15 and 15 plus devices get this feature but not the 14 Pro or Pro Max. Absolutely unbelievable. So these are the four features which I think are mere software features and has nothing to do with the powerful A17 Pro chipset and ideally should have also been released to 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max devices via an update. I can only think of two reasons why Apple made this exclusive to the 15 series devices. Number one, of course, they want the 15 series devices to sell more compared to the 14 series devices. And the second reason is that this is more of an S upgrade if you think about it as there aren't really many new features that makes use of the powerful A17 Pro chipset. Yes, there is log format video recording and yes, there is hardware ray tracing for console level gaming, but who are the audience for these features? The target audience for these features is quite limited and the majority of regular users wouldn't be even using these functions. So they aren't really getting much when they upgrade from the 14 Pro or Pro Max to the 15 Pro or 15 Pro Max. But don't get me started with USB-C being a new feature. Since when is USB-C a new feature in high-end devices? So Apple really had to show new features on the 15 series devices. But what doesn't make sense to me is that if they had limited these four features to the 15 Pro and Pro Max and they had advertised that this is due to the all new A17 Pro chipset, I think everyone would have bought it. But it's quite obvious, they've introduced this to the base variant of the 15 series and there is absolutely no explanation why these features cannot come to the 14 Pro or Pro Max. It kind of sucks when you think about it. Imagine you bought the latest MacBook Pro in 2023 with top end specs and then Apple introduces a MacBook Air in 2024 and the base variant of this MacBook Air has more features compared to the expensive MacBook Pro that you bought in 2023. How would you feel? Not good, right? I'm sure many 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max users are as disappointed as I am, but I think it's only fair. I really hope that Apple reconsiders and releases these features to 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max users via a software update. This kind of instills more trust and confidence with Apple. All right, that's it for today's video. If you like this video or found this content to be useful, a sub to the channel will be highly appreciated. I will see you in the next one.